my childhood was really happy because uh, I go to school, I uh, play in uh, front of the building where I uh, live with my friends and uh, I was the dreaming one day to be the like a designer for the clothes, that was my uh, dream to be and uh, get a job after the, when I finished the school and uh, settle my life and get married. The life before the war, it was normal, like everywhere else around the world, like here in America, you know, uh, we were going to school, you know, my parents, uh, I actually, dad was working, my mom was home staying and she was taking care of us, you know. After the school, I will go with my friends, uh, like uh, for the cafe bar and we will drink the coffee express, so we will talk and uh, laugh and uh, talking about what will we do when we grow up. Some stuff that we were watching in the TV, like Beverly Hills 90 to Ano or the Dallas show that was the really popular at that time when before the war started in Bosnia. And uh, you know all of a sudden when the war started you know I mean everything changed you know the normal life stopped we were without of telephone lines we were out without of electricity we were out of uh, water we were out of food you know I mean everything everything that we needed for the normal life, that you need basic stuff for the existence, we were completely out of it. Well, the war started. We had the country of Yugoslavia, which was a relatively peaceful people, fairly united. Well, after the death of their leader, Joseph Tito, this guy named Slogodan Milosevic came into power. He was a Serbian that with propaganda and nationalism wanted a greater Serbia. Serbia wanted to be the dominant force in the area. Bosnia consisted of Croats, Bosniaks, which were Bosnian Muslims, and you had the Serbians. The Bosniaks or Bosnian Muslims represented the largest population of Bosnia at the time. And what happened is they held an election because they were afraid that uh, Milosevic would take their land. They actually won their independence from Yugoslavia and the Euro European Union recognized them as an independent state. After this happened, that really angered the Serbians because they didn't feel like they were going to get what they wanted, so they attacked. About a year after the Serbians attacked, the Croatians joined in and helped the attack on the Bosnian Muslims. I would say two nights before we were kicked out of their home. I was a child, like I said earlier, and then there was a building where we lived, like apartments, condominiums, and I was playing with some girls that are like, uh, you know, they're still there in that uh, building, left. And the uh, military were coming and going, and at that time I didn't know what's going on. So I tried to turn on the light, and one of the Croat soldiers said, if you turn the light, I'm going to blow your head, the neighbor from the ninth floor. So I said, why would you blow my head off? Because I just want to turn off the lights. And then he said, I just, I will do it. So the second night, they want to take our dead away. The military come to search our home, Croats military. So they want to take his, uh, him away from us. And for me, that was torture because they were shooting in our house. They were like uh, throwing everything around. They were spitting on us. They were telling us bad words. They was, you know, cussing at us. So that night, we didn't sleep at all. And the next day, they say, you have to leave the place. You have to leave your home. God, where are we going to go? We don't have nowhere to go. I mean, it's fighting, it's uh, shooting, it's uh, everywhere you look, it's a smoke around. I, I, at that time, I was like holding my, my small baby that I have and uh, the toy, Play-Doh. And then I was holding to her and saying, God, where will we go? Where will we stay? So they kick us out from our home with no food, no clothes, nowhere to go. We were sheltered in one station. It's like uh, they used to, the students used to live there. And then it was also on Croat side. So we, we stayed night over there. At that night, there was a lot of bombing. They even threw the bomb at us. A lot of people got killed at that night. A lot of people got injured. So somehow the sun arised. It's the next day, we're supposed to get in the buses to leave from one side to another. 
God, that day was so long. It was lo It was hot. It was... It was, it was a lot, a lot of mean people around us. So we have to stay in the bus from morning till night with no water. And there's like a bus where like 50, 100 people all scrolling in one place. So there's no air. There's no air. There is no water. There is no food. So we suffer like whole day like in hell. It was like a hell to me. So when we finally, you and say, we have to, we, we're going to go across, across another side. When we come, there was fire everywhere. Everything was burning. People screaming, people crying. But when we come to this place where our people are, like a Bosnian army, God, I feel relieved. I feel saved. I feel happy. God, we're here. We're all, all five of us are alive and standing next to each other. And no one got hurt, no one got raped, no one got killed. So that time I said, thank you, God, for saving us from those enemies from other side. For the food, it's what we got from the humanitarian organizations. And the convoys were not allowed. And for a long time, convoy did not arrive in the Mostar. So people were living off of uh, what they have in uh, the storage. A uh, lot of times in Bosnia, older people, they will stock food, you know, for, you know, you never know. So they were giving the way, you know, to those people they need, you know, especially to the olders and to the uh, pe families with the kids. But um, a lot of times, I remember my mom will make the famous Bosnian dish, it's called pita, zeljanica, but uh, uh, zelja is actually the spinach. But it was not made out of the spinach. We will collect the grass uh, from the, um, around the, you know, uh, the house uh, garden. And she will cook the grass, you know, and she will, uh, you know, I mean, imp improvise somehow the, you know, I mean, the dough with little flour that she will have, you know. There was no salt. There is no oil. I mean, it was, n there was nothing. And I remember, you know, the some uh, neighbors they had a lot of the beans and beans is something that you know we hated because there was a constant morning noon night whenever we had it that's what we we eat but uh, there was something that was mostly found on the bosnian you know dining tables you know during the war and i remember my younger sister uh, used to say, after the war, I will never, ever eat beans again, never in any kind. So um, when the convoy was let inside the Mostar, you know, there were like, you know, the cans of the meat, you know, the, you know, the flour, you know, the real stuff that can, you know, I mean, uh, be uh, given. But I remember there was the planes, they were flying over the Mostar and they were throwing the packages, pallets of the packages, and they were carrying the little bitty brown, the army packages, and we will go into mountains and search for those. Even though uh, around the mountains there was minefields, there was the sniper shooting constantly, there were shelling, but uh, you're dying of hunger, and you have to go, and we will get up early in the morning, you know, and we will go. And um, inside those little packages, I always remember, there was the fa favor, our favorite dish, it was chicken and rice, there were crackers, Tabasco sauce. We didn't know at the time what was the Tabasco, little bitty Tabasco sauce. We are not worried about those stuff, did we have the water or the electricity, because the only thing that we are worried, are we going to survive? Are we going to be alive next day? First shell uh, fell on the no far from my home. Next thing that I remember after that, it was that big the explosion, the pain, warm of blood, the smoke, the uh, scream of Belma saying my arms, my arms. I didn't think about the pain. I was the hurting the people, the sc screaming, and I was just thinking, or am I going to stay alive or am I going to die? 
grandma and aunt, they run upstairs also, they try to help us, you know, to remove those stones, you know, and the, you know, the blocks, the brick blocks, uh, so we can, uh, you know, be taken to the hospital. Odjednom su se komšije stvorile i pokušu ja sam spustio tebe do moga oca, on je preuzeo tebe. I onda su došle komšije, pokupite, stavile te u jednog malog auto i odvezu su te brzo u bolnicu. My left hand was the cut like in the two pieces and the right one hand it was the already cut it. They say we don't have the blood, leave her, she will be dying very soon. Belma lost a lot of blood and that they are looking for donors because Belma, well, no, all three of us sisters were in the zero negative and that was really rare to find and the storage of the hospital didn't have any reserve for the zero negative. And uh, I saw them, they were bringing them my middle sister and I say, or oh, she going to be fine. If you cannot save me, save her at least that she can be. I'm sorry. That she will be alive at least for my family. And uh, so they say, don't worry about her, she will be fine. And then suddenly after that I didn't remember nothing. They took me to the uh, surgery room. They put me to sleep. Luckily, with the help of God and you know good people, the blood for Belma was uh, pretty much uh, collected. An hour after that, on the door, my dad entered. His face was red, black. I um. The bad, like I never saw, there is no words that can describe the harsh that uh, his face expressions were telling me. He was crying and that was not usual for my father, he never cried. And I said something bad happened, Dad what happened? He said everybody's fine but Belma lost both of her arms. Kad je doktor došao u sobu, sam bila sa Selmom, srednom čerkom koja je isto bila ranjena. Došao i rekao mi je, dao mi je belmin prsten koji ona imala na ruci i rekao mi je, belma hoće da vas vidi. Tada sam ja sišla dole i vidjela sam da je i moj muž dole, da je pored nje. Tada mi je saopštio da je belma ostala bez oba dvije ruke. Ja sam bila u šoku. Dan u životu mom je bio. Izgubila sam oca, majku, sestre. Ali taj mi je dan najtežiji bio u mom životu kad sam vidjela sutra ujutro Belmu bez oba dvije ruke. I taj dan nikada neću moći zaboraviti. To je teško. Kad ti gleda svoje dijete da ne može čak ništa oko sebe. So they go and they brought my mom and dad to the to tell me the what happened to me. And as uh, soon as they entering, I saw them, they're crying, and I say, why were you crying? They say, we have to tell you something, but I don't know how. And I say, what, what do you mean about that? They say, we have, uh, sorry, we have to tell you that you are, uh, lost both your arms. That moment when they told me that uh, that happened to me, I told them, my life is over. Don't even, uh, I don't want to anymore leave. Uh, I don't want to anymore go out. Uh, I just want to uh, stay in the ho home, in the room, and I don't want anybody to see it. In the March of uh, 4th March 1994, the, it was actually a day when uh, mom, Belma, my younger sister Haira and I left Bosnia for good. Dad was uh, not able to leave the country because he was in army, one. Two, he had old father, mother, uh, sister-in-law and her three kids that somebody needs to take care of them. 
And so that day, it was the most difficult day after the tragedy because we are going somewhere and we don't know where we're we going. Who is going to, you know, be there for us? Is there somebody going to be waiting for us? How is it going to happen? Kad smo došli u Abelin, ljudi, medicinsko osoblje iz bolnice, tako su nas lijepo poštovali. Ljudi na ulici pitali su nas, pričali su s nama, ali mi nismo znali engleski. When we came to the United States, me and my mom and my two sisters, we did not speak English, only that we knew there was the hello and bye, that's only that we know. Esma was cleaning the hospital rooms to making the minimum wage so that she could then walk two or three miles to the nearest supermarket, walk home carrying food and prepare a meal for her two daughters who were living with her in a small apartment near the hospital. Ja sam reci dani ma dani ma nije mogla spavati, reci misla kako će to sve proći, a to pomoć Allaha drago sve je prošlo lijepo. She say like the things it is like she was thinking every day. It was like a hard every day night. And every no night no she was not sleeping and like thinking how it was how will be. It was not easy like we are first of all all four women here knowing knowing nobody knowing no culture knowing I mean nothing about the United States and then it was hard I mean uh, she will go to work she will think where am I where is the my younger sister where is her middle daughter I mean where is her husband I mean it's not easy but to the thanks to the Allah the God she was go through it well beginning when we come in America the this several years for Belma was like frozen was same she never wants to move forward I have a lot of sadness anger inside to me she did nothing but lie on the sofa all day long she was in a severe deep dark depression she lay in a hotel corridor until the medics decided she was worth saving or there was a chance of saving her life and then in a hospital room she was airlifted to Abilene she had to face a new environment a new language a new set of challenges after a couple of years there she came to Dallas so each of these new environments brought its own difficulties and so Belma had to change each time in order basically to survive Hello, Jesse. Evo nas. Uh, for me, for the beginning, when everybody was the staring on me, it was a hardable because I don't want anybody like the to see me different way. I remembering one time when I ke- ke- moved to the Dallas, actually from the Abilene, and me and my mom were in the store, and uh, we were in the line waiting to pay it on the register. And he started laughing on, on me and he told me, you don't have arms. And for that moment, it was for me hardable. And uh, I came home and I was uh, crying and Selma asked me what happened and I told her. And uh, I remember she go to the store and she started uh, talking to him. And he said, I, I am so sorry, where is she? I need to ask her for forgiveness. It's hard for us to imagine Belma's day. And one person that we might tend to forget about is her mother, the essential role that her mother plays, not just as a traditional wife in a Muslim household, cooking, cleaning, I mean. Belma's mom has to cover that ground, but also care for a young woman who essentially is a one-year-old child. She has to wash her hair, style her hair, put on her makeup, dress her, feed her, uh, give her drinks, take her to the bathroom. Uh, Imagine the intimacy that's been forced on these two women, how closely they have to live throughout the day and throughout the night. If Belma has to go to the bathroom at night, she needs help from her mom. She can't pull down the pants that she wears in order to toilet herself, blowing her nose, taking her medicine, 
it's it's a, a, a very symbiotic type of relationship that these two women have. She's like my best friend. I really thank her for everything that she did for me and that she was first moment with me. And those days and days that I will never forget her. She will be every, every time in my mind, even if she died, and she will be all the time in my prayer. And one day I said to her, what's the change this year? Why is it that you now say you're willing to forgive people and you want to tell your story? In the past, you weren't ready to do this. And she said, because I've been reading Koran. And it was then that she discovered this phrase, if you forgive others, I will forgive you. The guy told me that I'm a good person, that I have a good soul. You will go going to one day show up and you will be much happy. So I say, that I'm going to the, forgive my enemy, whatever he did, that he did destroy my life, uh, no problem, I already forgive him. So through her faith, uh, Belma found the strength to build this new life. I will start uh, reading Quran more every day. I even read the whole Quran and going to more to the mosque for the prayer. I asked the Allah, Dear Allah, you know the best what was for me. So I ask you to remove this madness, to this anger, to this hateness from me. I need you really help. So I will be more, if you can please help me to live the love, life happy. I don't want to be any more angry. And that was like a, when I get the, my answer of the prayers. It's unusual that people have so many different chances to recreate a new life. Only through tragedy can one undergo this spiritual rebirth. I start noticing the changes and those changes I like a lot because I like to see my sister smiling, I like to see my sister moving forward, I like to see my sister be very happy. She burst out of her shell and she became more energetic. She decided to go back to school. She decided to start volunteering and doing a lot of different activities through the community, including our Bosnian community as well. She became more active. Makes no demands, but is there ready to go to Richland, to go to the Toastmasters meeting, to go to the amputee network, to go shopping, to get a new haircut, to look different with a new necklace, a new, a new blouse, so that when she is out in the public rather than staying at home, she's looking like the young woman that she was when she lived back in Mostar, before the war hit her city. This is exciting. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Finally, I got what I was praying for. <laughs> she's beautiful. Yes. And Belma say that uh, she is seeing somebody uh, and talking to somebody, and she would like to go meet him in person. They met through online, and um, I was shocked again. That was another shock, and um, of course we were all like, "Who is he? What is he doing? Where is he from?" And when she said from Bosnia, and he lives in Bosnia, we were like, "Oh my God, no." <laughs> How is this gonna work? And I told my sisters and mom, and they said, okay, we're gonna go. I go to the Bosnia, I met him, I spent the times and times with him. On October 12, he uh, asked me, would you love to be my wife? I, I was like a, in shock and surprise, and I say, yes, I would love to be your wife. What's going through your mind, Esma? She waited for this long time. I know that for sure. I can tell because we are very close friends. And I think she's very happy. My sister, Belma, she is um, disabled. She has no arms. So I don't know how we're going to do this. Uh, I mean, her ring is going to go on her necklace. Okay. Okay. And if there needs to be something translated to him, we have to do it because he speaks you don't, You don't understand English? No. no? <laughs> no. I just asked you that in English, so I know you understand something. <laughs> You're not any good at lying. I, 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 I can spot I can that, all right? All right, 
And you all, do you understand this is a legal marriage. The license has been issued properly in Dallas County under the authority of the state of Texas. Under the authority of my office as a judge in the state of Texas, it is my privilege and honor to pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> my life now I feel more happy I am blessed and thankful to God that I'm alive because now my life is more changed since the forgiveness I have a lot of friends have my family and enjoying the time spending the time with my uh, friends and family and now I have uh, the husband my love of the, my life <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,